Hello everyone. In a previous video, we looked at cascading these outputs from 0 to 9 on this 4017 decade counter, but we came across a phenomenon known as switch bouncing. And so in this video, I'd like to take a look at switch bouncing and how to eliminate it from your projects. Just to point out specifically what I mean, if you look at each button press here, you can see that for some presses of the button, the outputs advance more than one position on the LED. This is caused by switch bouncing and it's undesirable. We're going to take a close look at exactly what it is and see if we can completely eliminate it. So stay tuned. Let's jump right in. Let's first take a look at what switch bouncing is. And so in a mechanical switch that's on an arm, there might be a contact like this and when it comes close to the closing position when it gets very close uh, depending on the voltage that you have and that you're using you can actually get so close to the contacts that the air becomes conductive and you get a spike of current that's very brief but it's enough on a rising edge trigger like ours um, you're going to get a spike before you make full contact with the switch in the down position. This is just one. Another potential reason is when a switch does come down into the fully seated position, especially if it's manually controlled, one portion of the switch can move relative to the other, causing um, a, this crackling effect in essence, because these two surfaces are not mechanically finished perfectly, there will be some kind of machine lines or lines for manufacturing on the surface. Um, they, can, they can move relative to each other and as a result separate and make contact causing a drop and a spike in voltage before it's come to full rest. This happens more frequently with uh, larger, higher powered switches that have a lot of spring force on them and have to essentially come down and to settle. A third and less frequent cause for switch bouncing would be literally um, when you have the pull of a switch, particularly in a relay, I, I've noticed in older relays when the switch is pulled into the closed position it can literally bounce. It's because of the elasticity in the pull where it's pulled down very rapidly they can come down and bounce until it's fully at rest and, and, then, and as a result cause one, two or more spikes in voltage. And so let's just take a quick look at what we would really like to happen and an understanding of what is happening during a switch bouncing electrically. What I would really want when I press my switch I want the voltage to very cleanly rise up to 5 volts and stay at 5 volts until I release and then go back to zero and continue. And if I want to press it again, nice clean 5 volts and drop down to zero, only when I press it. However, as we discussed, we know that this doesn't happen. And so, in the first case, where when we get close, if we get a spark that goes through, we get, we get a current flow, a voltage spike up to the 5 volts for a very short period of time and it drops down to zero again. It's unwanted. Uh, it's not a false trigger, which I like to point out. It's unwanted. And then as we get even closer, it comes, it comes back up because it's getting closer and closer. And we might get a, a second spike before we come down to full rest. And it's still even getting closer until I finally um, have it fully pressed, fully depressed down, and no more bouncing phenomenon occurred. And so in this case, I just happened to draw 
these would be two unwanted spikes. Now on the scope, if we scoped it out, it actually, the, the periods of the spikes are very, very short. And you might see something like this. They're so short that it just looks like a line. You can, of course, we can zoom in and actually measure this distance. And in fact, that's what we're going to take a look at in, in eliminating um, this switch bouncing. And so, just to give a quick overview, um, as the switch is, you know, in the first, in that first case that I talked about, where the switch is getting close and we're getting some current flowing through the air, you'll get a couple of current sparks going through the air, giving us a very short period until it comes to full rest in the fully closed position here. And so, it's the, this period of time is the period of time that we're concerned with. And, and just by experimentation, we know that in most cases, especially with this push button type that I've been using, this spikes take place usually in less than one tenth of a second. And that's key in resolving the switch bounce problem. And so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to set up a 555 timer chip in a single shot mode where on the first rising edge, so let me get cleaned up here. So we're going to trigger the 555 timer and on the first rising edge, the 555 timer is going to give a nice clean corner and it's going to be wired in single shot mode and we're going to give it that period for that single shot for the 555 timer is going to be 0.1 seconds 0.1 seconds now all of the uh, bouncing can still take place but the 555 timer in its single shot mode will keep the signal high for 0.1 seconds and in essence bypass the bouncing of the switch and provide a very clean edge to the, uh, to the pulse that we want to give it into the IC. And so this is the bounce the switch circuit using the 555 timer. If you're not familiar with the 555 timer, you will be if you're uh, absolutely new with Hobby Electronics. This is an extremely common chip that is used from in many, many, many applications. You're definitely going to come across it. it it's very, very simply um, hooked up. It only takes two capacitors, one polarized, one non-polarized and two resistors. Um, both are 100 kilo ohms. So here's the bouncer switch. I'm sorry, this is the mechanical switch uh, hooked into this bouncer switch circuit. There's our 5 volts uh, DC, uh, our negative tied into ground, and pin 3 is the out. And what happens when we press this switch, we get a single pulse out of this and it has a period of 0.1 seconds. And so if we just look at that a little closer, let's just talk about the consequence of either making it longer or shorter. So let's say we're coming along and I press the button. Um, the chip goes into single shot mode and sends a high pulse for 0.1 seconds. There we go, 0.1 seconds. And so it's during this time that we expect all of the bouncing to happen. Now we could make we could make the period longer just by changing the value of the resistor that is attached, the 100k resistor that is attached to pin 6 and 7 on the chip. Now let's just say 
we made we made the pulse 0.2 seconds well it would definitely ensure or give a much more likelihood that all of the switch bouncing would happen and would be ineffective because the first rising edge is what's going to cause the trigger on the chip um, you would en encompass all of the switch bouncing if it was 0.2 seconds however what we're risking by making it longer at 0.2 seconds is if in my application I want to press the button again within 0.2 seconds and so during that 0.2 seconds I'm not getting a re any um, effective trigger after my first pulse because we can actually press buttons at quite a high speed and so 0.2 seconds just runs that risk of possibly not being effective if fast um, button pushing is something that might happen in that particular circuit. Now if you know that it's just a one button push and it happens rarely, you might want to do that and, and, and completely eliminate any possibility of switch bounce um, happening um, by encompassing and <coughs> by excuse me by encompassing it all within a 0.2 second pulse but if you are um, having to increase or press the button rapidly you may not want to go to 0.2 seconds now what's the consequence of going to say, let's say something shorter than 0.1 seconds, let's say 0 0.05 seconds. Let's get this right. Let's say 0 0.05 seconds. Well, at 0 0.05 seconds, all the switch bouncing may not have happened, and you may still catch a bounce happening between the 0 0.05 and 0 0.1 threshold. And so, just by experimentation, and in practical use in the industry, it seems like that 0.1 period for switch bouncing encapsulates most applications and for the speed that we need to uh, encapsulate all of the bouncing that might happen um, during a button push. And so with that said, probably the 0.1 second um, time period for the pulse coming out of the 555 timer is what we should be looking at um, unless your application you know requires something different and so we'll uh, we'll take a look at the breadboard and see uh, what the build looks like okay here's the circuit completely built now here are the two capacitors this is polarized this is non-polarized we have the positive rail here negative rail here the two resistors this resistor here is the one you would vary if you wanted to vary the time period of the output pulse the 100k I think I actually have 120k uh, resistor here because I didn't have uh, two 100k's and so this is it and so what I'm gonna do um, I have nothing tied to the output, which is output pin 3, just in, in quick review here. The notch on the chip is right here, and in the counterclockwise direction, pin 1 is here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So output pin number 3 is right here. So I am just going to put a resistor, a current limiting resistor, on the output and just put a regular LED from that to ground and there you can see I get the pulse so I'll hit it quickly uh, it's not too apparent but um, the pulse does last longer than uh, how long I have the button pressed so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach um, instead of this current limiting resistor which is a 1k resistor and this LED, we're going to hook the output of this chip, pin number 3, and we're going to hook it up to our uh, circuit, and we're going to use it to see if we eliminate switch bouncing.
let's take a look at that and so here is my circuit still unchanged but you can see uh, if you look I do get some unwanted triggering so now I'm going to remove this switch um, and you can see some very erratic behavior here when I remove that 1k resistor and we remove the output from that 550k 555 timer uh, circuit which I put right here and that's the resistor and LED that we were just looking at and I'm going to tie the clock in directly to pin number three and you can see the crazy behavior immediately stopped and that was just picking up and being triggered by some stray voltages so once again I'll just pull this out and let you see this is just stray voltages um, through the air and when we plug it in we get stability and now you can see and even when I go pretty quickly I'm not getting any unwanted triggering switch bouncing actually is completely eliminated so I'll go at a normal speed here for a few few more seconds you're not going to see a single unwanted trigger due to mechanical switch bouncing there we go and so I hope this video was helpful um, I hope you have an understanding now of what switch bouncing is and that should you come across it as a problem you'll know what to do I should also mention that there are many other ways to debounce a switch this is just one that's very effective and very popular so if you can please like this video subscribe to my channel and I really do appreciate it if you leave some uh, relevant comments down below and if you'd like any other videos that you'd like to see from me also, uh, you can leave those in the comments below. Follow me on social media. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon.